Welcome back. My guest in this segment is Mehdi Najari. We're going to be talking about media censorship. Um, so Mehdi, why don't you introduce the topic and uh, away we'll go. What's happened on, the, on June the 18th, the government of uh, Canada announced that they are going to continue with the tr Trans Mountain Pipeline. And it was my day off, so I said, uh, let's see what the media is talking about. And I never heard anything in negative aspect of the, uh, of the pipeline. Why should this pipeline, I mean, the negative aspect of it. And so what's happened, uh, at 4 o'clock, CBC Vancouver station had the open line between 4, 4 and 4.30 for people to call and express their opinion. And that was after 4 o'clock uh, newscast. I called and I went through. I was surprised that my call went through. And they asked me, what do you want to talk about? And I said, I want to talk about $260 billion liability for remediation of the land that they are destroying. And, and for, uh, just, just to focus on that for one yeah. second, the cleanup cost for the... Is it for the tar sands or is it for the tar sands and the abandoned oil wells? An abandoned oil well, yes. Yeah, in for Alberta, the cleanup cost, not that it can be cleaned up, but they're talking about $260 billion, a yeah. quarter of a trillion dollars, and we never hear that. You never, and, and I never heard that on that day, so I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk, to talk about $45 billion subsidy each year uh, Canada gives to the fossil fuel industry. That's a total subsidy that they never talk about that. So she said, uh, the, the person that answered the phone, she said, okay, you will be on queue. Next, you are next. After a minute, she called, she come back and said, what did you want to say? I repeat. And then she said, okay, thank you. And she hung up. And this is CBC radio. That's CBC. Yeah. So I called back. I went through again. And I asked her, why did you cut me off? Why did you hang up on me? She said, because somebody already said those things. I said, no, I haven't heard it. Nobody has said it. She said, oh, somebody is on the queue to say it, so you don't need to say it. I said, OK, if I, somebody is going to talk about it, I don't need to talk about it. I listened to the show. Nobody talked about it. So why are they afraid? And I tried that that day with CFAX, both in the morning and in the afternoon. They didn't allow. In fact, in the afternoon, it came out that I may have been banned from CFAX. So I have to talk to the station manager, and he is uh, out uh, on vacation until July 15th. So I don't know if I'm banned or not. But the important thing is to talk about that $260 billion liability for remediation of the damage that they have done to the land. They never, as you said, can remediate, really fully bring back the land, because they are cutting. Awesome. 200 feet of the whole earth, top, top of the earth, and grind that, squeeze it with the lots of use of lots of energy to, to get the oil out. Jack, when I was going to graduate school in US about 30 years ago, 34 years ago, I was studying soil erosion. I was reading a book about this French farmer that was very upset with the lack of productivity and soil erosion in his field. He picked up a fistful of OS soil, dirt, from his land. And in sorrow, he was saying, behold, it's France. This is France. This yes, is it's it's France. This is Canada. And I thought that's the highest expression of, uh, of patriotism I ever saw. And since then, here in Canada, we are destroying, take 200 feet and destroy the earth forever. The pit land, everything is gone. The land that is developed within billions of years, millions of years, is destroyed forever because they cannot get it back. And we don't say, behold, it's Canada. Yeah. And in our patriotism is so shallow. Is, is, uh, shaking a flag or having a Canadian passport, you know. We are, me as a newcomer, 32 years ago I came to Das Canada, I put my hand up and I said, I will be faithful to Canada and Canadian interest. And that's why I am speaking out. This, this is destruction of Canada we are allowing. So what's happened? How do we know $260 billion liability? Because the regulator said so. 
one of the vice president of, of uh, this is the uh, Alberta, Alberta Energy Regulator Center. Right. And part, you know of the, part of the Alberta yes, government. Do you know what's happened to him, to them? He has to apologize for a slip of tongue. Yes. Not so because he said the truth, which is that this is going to cost $260 billion to try to clean up. He had to apologize. He has to apologize for a slip of tongue, not, not that he said something wrong. It yes. was accurate. And that is the minimum. You know, the $260 billion is minimum. And then he ha the regulator himself has to resign because that's unacceptable to tell the public the truth. And if we wonder why we never really heard about this, uh, it's because the whole country, the politicians, it, the media, it's it all It was corrupt. reported in, 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 in the Toronto Star and, uh, and global, global TV, but one day issue yeah. and gone. Yeah. The $45 billion subsidy every year, you know, the, the government are spending lots of money for propaganda and say, we need the tar sand and, the, and oil sand development because it pays for hospital and a school. Yeah, but they right. never talk about $45 billion subsidies every year, according to the International Monetary Fund, Canada is giving to the oil industry, fossil fuel industry. And if that is the case, then that means we, through our taxes, giving money to the fossil fuel industry, not the other way around. We are taking money from hospitals and schools and giving it to the fossil fuel industry. The third thing was the rate of cancer in, in Fort Chipman, where the, where the Athabasca River go through the tar sand area and then go to Fort Chipman, taking the pollution. The, the rate of the rare cancer is, is much higher than, than any other places. And the, we are talking about the rare cancer that you don't see it in other places. And when Dr. John, John O'Connor in 2002 and three talked about it, they went after him. Health Canada went He was out. a local doctor in the area who yes. was treating people yes. who had these rare cancers, yes. and he linked it to what was going on oh, in the tar sands. With the pollution, water yeah. pollution and air pollution. And basically he was He attacked. was ostracized, and, and the Health Canada went after him to, to get to, to t take back his license. Yeah. But at that was 2007. By 2009, a report came that Dr. O'Connor was, was truthful and right about what he was saying. The water use and pollution, the Athabasca River Delta is dying. And, and, and the Wood Buffalo National Park, the World Heritage Site, is in danger because of lack of water. The moisture is being taken. There is two projects that is taking water from the Athabasca River Delta, and that one is Site C through Peace River. You know, they take water, and, and the water is, does, do not go to the, to the delta, and the tar sand. And they never talk about these aspects of it. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the science-based decision-making. It's supposed to be science-based decision-making, and Trudeau promised that to us. And there is no science-based decision-making. There, there is no scientific basis for continuing with, with, the, with the new pipelines. No. So and maybe we can just mention jobs as well, yes. because this is presented to us. The BC is blocking Alberta, and Alberta government cares about jobs. But that's another lie, there, because the jobs, the unions oppose the pipeline saying that it's bad for jobs. They want to refine the oil in Alberta, and that's where the jobs are. So the whole idea of the pipeline being good for jobs is yet one more lie that It we're was on in the news yesterday that Alberta is shipping more oil from tar sand area than ever. So how come the job is not back? Yeah. Because they are using, um, using robots yeah. for, for all, uh, lots of jobs there. And the jobs are not going to come back, even though they are going to expand the, the production of the tar sand by, by that double it. Yeah. So, so this, this is what, what, what we are dealing with. And I want to now shift to what's happening with CFAX. On a daily basis, we have this morning show that is, that is brainwashing the public, lying to public, telling the environmentalists are misinforming you, 
And uh, I am the one that uh, the host of the show, Adam Sterling, is saying that I am the truth teller. Every day he is saying that. And every day he is saying that the, the public is uh, being misinformed by the, by, the, by the environmentalists. And now that they know the truth, the polls are coming back and showing that, uh, that the public support the project. Right, right. And the polls that they are talking about is surveys, is, is bogus surveys. It has no accuracy and we can prove all this without shadow of doubt, the Angus rate, Epsis rate, and the others, is they are just manipulating the public. They don't tell the public who's paying for these polls. And the polling, their polling, Angus Reid's polling is definitely phony. It's, yeah. they, they poll only their own membership, and they know what people think because they poll them over and over again, so they don't ask certain people certain questions because they don't want to hear the answers. Here is some of the example of, of Mr. Sterling misinformation. And, and another thing is that they don't allow people like you and me to call. I call, they don't let me on. Yes. You called, I asked you to call the last week and they didn't let you on. It's because he knows that we can expose him. No, I only tried for one day because I just can't stand to listen yeah. to it anymore, but I didn't get through. Yes, so, so here, is, uh, is some of the things he say. For example, he attacked the environmentalist. And this Twitter on, uh, on May 17, he say, there are too many sophists on the green side who participate in what while having the goal to call themselves journalists, knowingly they were duping the public. That was monstrously unfair to Alberto Progressive. How can that be prevented? from happening again. So here, for the, for the first time I see in his Twitter, somebody go after him and ask him the question. So Sandy Garasino, which is a lawyer and prosecutor in past, and now he worked with National Observer, she said, who are you talking about? Adam Sterling responded, I don't know, Sandy. Who do you think I am talking about? Oh, so Adam said that people in the environmental movement are misleading the public, yeah. and she asked him, Who are he, you talking about? Who, who are these she. people? Yeah. Okay. And, and Adam Sterling said, I don't know. Who do you, Sandy, who do you think I am talking about? And Sandy Garcino said, I am asking you. Adam Sterling responded, I don't publish fake news. Yeah. Sandy Garcino said, uh, be specific. You said people who call themselves journalists knowingly duping the public presumably by knowing pub, uh, knowingly publishing false information. Which journalist? Adam Sterling answered, do you want a list? Sandy Garasino said, just answer the question. It's not so hard. And Adam Sterling said, we will get a, a one soon enough. So he is not mentioning any name, you know? Yeah. He is just accusing So he accuses people in the environmental movement of misleading the public, but when asked who these people are, he has no names. He has no names, and this has been continuing for a, for a long time, for a long time, and I, how do I know? As you know, we have been recording the, his whole show for more than a year, so we have record of one year, more than one year of his show, and anybody want to see our claim, we can, we can prove it in the court, if we have, end up in court, we will prove it in court, that Mr. Sterling misrepresenting, mis giving misinformation to public, and all in, in, this, in support of corporate interests and fossil fuel industry. Here is another one. Uh, somebody uh, by the name of Western Hemlocks wrote, what do you make of this? He's telling Adam. The conclusion you draw from Royal Society report regarding ability to clean up Betjeman is opposite to Dr. Schindler's conclusion. Right, so the Royal Society of Canada wrote a report and Mr. Sterling is using that to say that Dilbit can be cleaned can, up. Can be cleaned up. And Adam Sterling answered, I know we have been searching far and wide to try to find any dissenting voice for the sake of diversity. So he's, say, he's saying that all scientists agree that we can clean up the Dilbit. Uh, the, the Dilbit. And so we cannot find anybody. I am not familiar with the specific professor at work, uh, at the work he did before, and the work he did before retirement. We are talking about David Schindler. David Schindler is, if there is 
handful of Canadian scientists that are well known around the world, David Schindler is one of them. With, with his work in experimental lake for with the acid rain, yeah. is a well known scientist. And he he contradicted what Adam Sterling he, says. Yes, because what Mr. Sterling said about this report on Royal Society of Canada that I have here, when he mentioned, he, he, he said that the Royal Society of Canada report saying that we can clean up the, the betumen, and 95% of it was cleaned in 2007 when it uh, when it was uh, a spell. A spell. That is not the Royal Society of Canada said in the report. In fact, the Royal Society of Canada, in the first page of that report, said that it put a disclaimer that we do not we do not have any responsibility for content of that report. And that report also, when it's talk about the cleaning up, is talk about he's saying in page 160 and 376. That that report, that that cleanup, was based on unpublished report. Who 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 are they talking about? They are talking about Kinder Morgan. Kinder so Morgan is claiming that Kinder Morgan published uh, or has a report no, that is unpub unpublished, unverified. That means unverified report. And that's what's in the this report by the Royal Society. Yes. They claim no credit for. It. But Mr. Mr. Sterling pretends that the Royal Society is saying something. Yes. And this is allowed for our government and the CRTC, who oversees the media, to allow a radio personality to continuously misinform the public is really, I, I mean, where are we? We challenged him in November. I was in your show. We challenged him on that. He never responded. He said, let's go, let's go and have a debate on this. He doesn't want. In this report, Royal Society of Canada, page 14, it said that the, the fossil fuel industry paid for those, that report. It's commissioned by fossil fuel industry. They lay out the terms of reference for the report. And Adam Sterling never talked about that. I believe, and, and he also, when he said that the, the scientists, he cannot find scientists. Who oppose who what are, he who, says. Who oppose what he said here. 2014, academic call for oil sand moratorium. 2015, North American scientists call for end to tar sand mining. More than hundreds of them put their name down on a letter to the government of Canada. And scientists call for a moratorium on oil sand development. Ten reasons for moratorium. None of, he never talked to a scientist about these things. He never bring an environmentalist when he accused them of lying. He never in last year and a half brought one environmentalist and lay the charges when they are there to defend themselves. This is cowardice. And he doesn't let me get in while, while at the same time tell the public, I like to be challenged. I am a truth teller. I tell the truth. It's just a joke. Yeah, it is a joke. CFAX is a joke. CFAX, I should say, through Adam Esther, he, they, they enable him and allow him to say that. I have nothing to say about other shows. I, in fact, I, I like uh, the afternoon show and, and even Mr. Al Farabi, they are doing a decent job. But Mr. Sterling is misrepresenting. We are challenging him again. If you have a leg to stand on Mr. Sterling, if you are the truth teller, let's go at it. We go in a public setting and debate and see if you can prove any of the point that you make. Well, a oh, great public setting would be his radio show. Which his a lot radio of show, or to. please come here. Oh, come here. Come here and show, because with the camera on, they can see the, the body language, who is, who is telling the truth and who is not. Let the public decide, Mr. Selling. Mehdi, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.